מצוין. וונדרפול, ליקוטי מוהר"ן, תורה ל"ח, רבנו איז טיצ'ינג אס, פי אל פי אדבר בו. בים גימטריה בכל, הוא עושה את אברהם אבינו בן בלסט, by that um, ability that all of his prayers been answered. אברהם, השם ברך את אברהם בכל, that השם blessed אברהם in everything. everything means that טוב השם לכל, that השם is good for everything. that you can find everything you need when you pray. Like we saw about Avraham Avinu here, Rabbeinu was talking about the morning of Avraham, the kindness of Avraham, that Vayashkem Avraham Baboker, that he wakes up early in the morning and immediately he go to pray and to talk to Hashem on all of his needs and all of the issues. Vezeh, umivchar shalishav tu be'u be'yam suf. And because of that, umivchar shalishav tu be'u be'yam suf. When you stand and pray and you find that power inside of you to believe in the Creator and to give to... to, to to crown the king, to, 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 to let him rule, to let, give him the power, give him power that he's going to be the ruler, that he's going to be the king, that you just ad admit in that. You just say, I know that's the truth. Hashem is the king. Hashem melech, Hashem alach, Hashem imloch l'olam va'ed. And you believe in that with all of your heart. So then you give him power. And by that your prayer has been answered because as much as you have faith in your tefillot, that's how much your prayer is going to be answered. And then v'v'char shalishav tu be'u b'yam suf. Even the strongest enemies, even the yetzara. Yesterday I gave a class in Bat Yam. I spoke to the guys over there and I'm telling them, you know, And with your tefillot, you can be answered. And we talked about it, but do it. And, and then suddenly one of them said, but you know, Yetzirara, why are you back off? Why are you back off? Rabbeinu said that Yetzirara is power of imagination. Why are you back off? If you're going to be strong and fight and don't look back. I saw, I don't want to mention the name of the tzaddikim because for sure I'm wrong and for sure even just thinking something wrong about those righteous people, it's for sure a mistake. But I'm, I'm saying about my own experience, about my, my, my thoughts that, went, that I went through when I was learning that part. I learned, heard from Rav Shalom that if Moshe Rabbeinu was alive in each and every one of the generations, so for sure there would be no Holocaust at all. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu is a person that is climbing up to heaven, to, to Mount Sinai, and he's talking and talking and talking, and he's not going back, no matter what happens, he's not receiving no as an answer. And he's always continuing to pray and to pray and to find more reasons and more arguments and, and more things to, 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 to convince Hashem. And then in the end, Hashem is saying to Moshe Rabbeinu, Okay, I, I accept your words. I forgive like you said. Okay, you're right. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, he never backs off. That's the power of Moshe Rabbeinu. So I read about one of the righteous people and I'm talking about one of the greatest ones. I'm talking about a huge one. Someone that... No arguments about his purity, about his greatness. He was in the generation of the Holocaust. And in a certain time, he realized that it's a decree and that you cannot stop it. And that's it. And other righteous people also testify on him that he was doing a lot for the sake of Am Yisrael and that he was tearing the skies with prayers. And he done, he done amazing things. That there's nothing bad you can say on him, but... There is something weird because in a certain moment he said, there's nothing to do. That is something that we never heard from Moshe Rabbeinu. And I'm not saying again, I'm, I'm fixing myself because I do very honor that person as much as I can. I know he's great, he's huge, it's a huge righteous man. One of the biggest of, of all generations. But still, if Moshe Rabbeinu would be there, Moshe Rabbeinu would never back off. Moshe Rabbeinu would say, but I will try another time. I will say another word. He wouldn't say it's a decree. He wouldn't accept that decree. And we, even though that we are so far, even though that we're so low, even though that we're coming from, from rock bottom, we're coming from the lowest place of, on earth, we're coming from hell, straight from hell. Okay, great. From that place that you're coming, you can be even stronger than those hugest, biggest, righteous people. Because from that place, you know you don't have nothing to lose. You're afraid to lose your world to come. You think you have a world to come. Based on what? Why do you think you have something to lose? You think you're going to lose your life, uh, eternal life? Do you know for sure that you have eternal life? You know for sure. What you can lose? 
Bitul Torah is bothering you. What is bothering you? So nothing bothers you. So nothing can stop you, can hold you back from pushing till the edge, till the final, final, how you call that? Line. Line? To the, to the end. We can bring the redemption. We can bring the geula, each and every one of us, because we don't have nothing to lose. What you can lose? What you going to lose? Your wisdom. <laughs> you know, you're screwed up. You know you're stupid. You're going to lose your purity. You know you're impure. What are you going to lose? You lose your Torah. You know you don't have Torah. You don't have that Torah. What are you going to lose? What are you going to lose? What do you have? A life in the world to come? Who promised you you're going to have? Who? Do you know for sure you have a world to come? You know for sure someone promised you you're going to have eternal life. You don't know now. So why are you afraid to, to fight? You see that with enemies, you can see it today in the news. And you, you can see you have people that don't have fear to die. You cannot win. You cannot fight with them. How, what, you, what are you going to threat them? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Very scary. He's not afraid of your weapon. He does not afraid from, from your guns. He does not afraid from your bombs. He, he's not afraid for, for his life. So he, you, you cannot win. In that situation, you cannot win. Unless Hashem is going to do something else. But you, one on one, you cannot win. You, he, he's ready to die. He's not afraid of you. He's not afraid of death. What you can do. So we need to come to that place also, but not in a silly, stupid way that we're ready to die. Just to be ready to sacrifice ourselves to Hashem in Barach spiritually. To commit ourselves till the last breath of our lives. To put everything to risk everything in, to bring it all into Avodat Hashem, to invest all of our powers, to sacrifice ourselves, and to put everything we have, all of our talents, all of our abilities, all of our wisdom, all of our inner power, all of our wisdom, all of our life experience, to bring it into Avodat Hashem, and to serve Hashem with that. If you're righteous, if you're pure, if you're Talmid Chacham, okay, so now you see that to go to talk to people, it's contaminating you, it's rejecting you from Beit HaMikdash for a few hours every day, you're not learning, oh, you cannot daven in a minyan anymore, why? Because you, you're now talking to people, so okay, I understand, it's disturbing your Avodat Hashem, it's interrupting in the middle of your, of your Kedusha, of, of your schedule, holy schedule that you have. But when you're like me, and you don't have nothing to lose, and you just want to help people, so you haven't prayed my riv yesterday. And what happened? So tell me what happened. So you failed. So what happened? So what happened? So you lost the mincha. So you haven't put tefillin rashi yesterday. So you missed mikveh. So you haven't done shahid badadut. And yes, so who cares? You have today. You can do an hour now. You can search for a mikveh now. You can daven mincha if you want. You can pay shachrit. You can put filin. Also Rashi, also Rabbeinu Tam. Whatever you want. You can do tshuva on all of your sins, on all of your avonot. What's the problem? Do tshuva. I'll tell you something. Let's say now, the biggest rabbi of them all. Let's, let's uh, just, just that it's going to be clear. Let's say one, three years ago, Rav Ovadia Yosef is giving a class in the radio. There are 200 people in the crowd in the Bet Knesset, Kol Barama, Kol Chai, all of the biggest radios. He's also on television. And Rav Ovadia Yosef is saying to the public, to Holy Am Israel, we all need to do tshuva. Kulanu tzrichim la'asot tshuva. Okay, that's, that's the sentence. Tell me from the million people that heard him, who will go and gonna do tshuva? None. No one. No one. What do, what do I mean? What, what do I mean? Everyone going to try to do something good. One going to say, yes, we need to learn more Torah. One going to say, yeah, I have to guard my eyes stronger. One going to say, yes, I have to stop rebuking my wife. Great things. Rav Ovadia said, Anachnu tzrichim lachzor betshuva. We need to do tshuva. What it means to do tshuva? To do tshuva, it's not to be religious. To do tshuva, it's not to go to the mikveh. To do tshuva, it's not to do one hour, but the do of, of tefillot, of prayers. To do tshuva, it doesn't mean to, to, to guard your eyes or to have a beard or not to rebuke your wife. To do tshuva, there is a mitzvah that calls mitzvah tshuva. 
That mitzvah is one of 613 mitzvot mid the oraita from the Torah that are written in the Chumash in the Bible. Over there it's written that a person needs to do tshuva. Rambam is explaining to us the meaning of mitzvot tshuva, that you need to regret on your sin. And you need to confess, you need to mention, you need to tell the sin, the story, the sin story to Hashem Barach. You need to tell him, yesterday when I was praying Shacharit, before I said Gaal Israel, I was checking my WhatsApp. It's wrong, it's a sin, it's an avera, it's not allowed, it causes half sick. You're not allowed to do that while you're davening Shacharit, while you pray Shacharit. Great, it's a mistake. That's my mistake, I done that, so now I'm apologizing to you, Hashem, on that, and I'm asking, please, Hashem, give me the power not to do that again. That's Mitzvah Tshuva. Now, if Rav Avadir Yosef gonna say to two million people, you should do Tshuva, none of them gonna do that. None of them gonna do Tshuva. What they all gonna do? One gonna have a longer beard, one will never gonna insult his wife anymore. Great things! Rav Avadir say do Tshuva. Am Israel gonna be redeemed in tshuva, only in tshuva. En Israel nigalim ela b'tshuva. When Am Israel gonna be saved finally, it's gonna be in tshuva, by tshuva, only after doing tshuva. Vechshos in tshuva, and when they're doing tshuva, tshuva, not beards long as hell, not kippot, huge as a tent. No, tshuva, confessions, viduim, Hashem, slachli, not vidui of mincha. You need to mention the details of the sin. You need to confess on your avonot. Hashem, I woke up today after the time of Kriyat Shema. Hashem, today I missed Mincha. Please help me never to miss Mincha anymore. That's it. That is the mitzvah that's going to bring the redemption. That is the mitzvah that's going to bring the geulah, the salvation of all of the world, of all of Am Israel. Now, even if Rav Ovadi Yosef is going to say it to two million people, to say tshuva, do tshuva, no one going to understand what he's talking about. There is a block on that. There is a, a, a darkness that is, is, is holding us back from the salvation. Because Israel nigalim ela You cannot be saved in nothing else except of tshuva, not being religious. Look how many Batei Midrashot, thousands of Talmud Chachamim sitting and learning Torah, and Mashiach is running away from them. Mashiach cannot stand them, cannot look at their faces. They're so far from tshuva. They so far from confessions, from humility, from anava, from apologizing to Hashem, standing in front of Hashem Barach, Dalif Nemiata Omed, and to confess and to tell him today, Hashem Barach, while I was standing in Bet Knesset, I was looking out from the window and I saw the neighbor, a female woman, hanging the, the, the laundry on the on the string, on the la, on the, 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 the rope, Khever Kvisa. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, do tshuva. Nothing happened, do tshuva. If you're not going to do tshuva and you're going to uh, make your beard longer, it's not going to fix the sin. If you're going to have a bigger kippah or you're going to put filin earlier, it's not going to fix your bad eyesight. It's not going to fix your lashon hara. It's not going to fix the fact that you woke up late so many mornings, that you missed so many mikveh, so many mitzvot to do, that you ate treif and not kosher. It's not going to fix it, but tshuva is going to fix it. You can have the longest beard in the world, the longest peod, the biggest kippah, the, 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 the most, the greatest tzitzit, tiltchelet, whatever you want. It's not fixing. That's something else. That is another obligation. You need to wear tzitzit. Great. You need to guard your eyes. Wonderful. But on all of the mitzvot, if you missed one of them, you need to do tshuva. And that's a different mitzvah. It's a unique mitzvah. And that is the mitzvah, that's the obligation that's going to bring the salvation to Am Israel. Am Israel will not going to be saved if they're going to put fill in. Rav Berlan now, he said, Mashiach going to come after Tu Bishvat, everyone know. Mashiach going to, uh, you heard the recording? He's saying, Mashiach going to come after Tu Bishvat. You should know, Mashiach can come. It's an amazing time for Mashiach to come after Tu Bishvat. If all of Am Israel, go, <laughs> now that started the if. If all of Am Israel going to keep their Shabbos, if all of Am Israel going to put fill in, they're going to say, Ten Tikkun Aklali, everyone going to say, Ten Tikkun Aklali, Mashiach can come. Okay, so he won't come, right? Okay, now we can relax. Okay, we can continue. Great. He's not coming after Tu Bishvat. Relax. He's not coming. He's not coming after Tu Bishvat. Not even the next Tu Bishvat. He's not coming. 
Because we need to do tshuva first. So Rav Beran is saying it's a time, it's a time to, the Mashiach can come, if everyone is going to wake up. If, great, if we're not there. We're not going to say, I'm not going to say ten tikkun aklali. Even if you're going to tell me the Adrabah, it's a reason not to say tikkun aklali. You want Mashiach to come and, and, and going to ruin our party? We want to stay here. We want to enjoy life. We want to sit. We have a nice table, nice friends, sitting, learning Torah. Holy tree with branches. Now we have the Colombian branch. We're opening a branch, a Muna branch in Colombia. And you can understand it. You as a Baal Tshuva, you can understand it. Because you can understand the bitterness of a sin. You understand how bad it is to fall. How horrible it is to insult someone, to stand in front of someone and to hurt him, to hurt his feelings. When he's crying, you feel the sorrow. If you can feel his sorrow, you can feel the regret. So now if you feel the regret, you can do tshuva, you can confess. And if you confess, that's it. You're a tzaddik gamur. You're a complete righteous man, like the, the Gemara is saying. Tzaddik gamur, complete righteous. And it all depends in tshuva. Just people don't take that. People don't believe in that. They have yet on that, on doing tshuva, on mitzvah ta tshuva, but that is what that requires for us to be saved. That everyone always going to do tshuva, that everyone every day going to have that one hour of confessions, of viduit varim, lifnet an chacham, of confessing, of talking to Hashem, of telling Hashem itbarach, Hashem, I'm sorry, on yesterday it was, it was amazing, thank you. But immediately after it, I got a phone call and then I forgot you already. I started to talk on that person, Hashem, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Move on, that's it, you fix that conversation, move on. And then Hashem, you remember before I went up to the bus, I, I saw that store and it was a liquor store, Hashem, I'm sorry. You know what happened after that. And then you confess, and you confess, and you confess, and you do tshuva. And then from one sin to the other, you jump from one tshuva to the other, and then it atones everything, every single sin. And then in the end, when you complete your tshuva, when you confess on everything, how are you going to confess on everything? How are you going to confess on age 15? How you can you can confess on, on what that happened five years ago? You don't remember yesterday night. How you can confess on five years ago, seven, ten years ago? You don't need to. If you're going to get used to confess on today, on every day you're going to confess, once in a while you're going to mention, please Hashem, slach lenu al kol avonotenu, forgive us on all of our sins, it's going to atone, it's going to, it's going to bring forgiveness to all of your past also. You're going to fix everything. And now you're going to say, too many sins. I have thousands of sins a day. Every day I'm sinning so many mistakes. Every day I'm, I'm bitul Torah. Only bitul Torah, I cannot count the minute that I need to confess on that. So you need to confess according to your spiritual level. It means according to your ability to feel, to sense your, your defects. It means that if for you now, it's not bitul Torah not to learn Torah. Just only if really three, four, five days without Torah, wakes you up to see that something is wrong, so on that you need to confess. Hashem is not judging you on every moment and moment. He is judging righteous people on every moment and moment, because with the righteous people, He's a lot more medakdek, He's a lot more strict with them. But to you, to each and every one of us, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is judging us according to our spiritual level, according to our ability to feel. If you didn't felt the mistake, you didn't know that it's wrong, no one's going to judge you on that. You need to understand that you need to do tshuva, do tshuva on what that you feel that is wrong with you. If you just now sat with a, a person, spoke on the phone, and you said, ah, that person now is a jerk, and you moved on in your conversation, that's Lashon Ara. But you, you didn't feel that. For you, in your level, only after five, ten minutes that you're talking, and you know, you don't know what he done, you don't know how he was talking, I heard him, yes, I, and then you wake up. If for you, it takes five minutes of bad Lashon Ara to wake up to understand you're doing something wrong, on that you need to do tshuva. Because who, who woke you up? Hashem woke you up. So Hashem woke you up after five minutes. Hashem woke you up after five minutes. Hashem woke you up after five days. So do tshuva when Hashem is waking you up. On what you're going to do tshuva? On what that Hashem woke you up to do tshuva on. What that you feel regret, that you feel sorrow, that you feel bad about it? On that do tshuva.
And Hashem is not asking from you to do nothing else except of that. Because tshuva is going to bring us to our salvation. Tshuva is going to bring us to a complete faith. Because if on every situation that you forgot Hashem, you're going to pray to Hashem, Hashem, please let me believe in you. Please help me not to sin anymore. Please Hashem, give me the power to believe in you. Please Hashem, give me the strength to stand against my Yetzirah. If you're going to pray like that, and you're going to bring Hashem back into your life, to those situations that you forgot Hashem in those situations, and you're going to bring Him back into your life, you will have complete faith. You will always going to see and recognize Hashem's supervision on your life. You're going to always recognize Hashem inside your life. The reason that the person is sinning is because that he forgot Hashem. He thought, I need to make some money. And he forgot that Hashem is supplying everything. He thought to himself, hey, I need to fix my wife. I need to rebuke her. I need to tell her because she is not doing well. So I have to fix. You forgot that Hashem is Barach. He woke you up so he can for sure wake her up. And there's maybe a reason that he's trying to hint you something that you're going to learn about yourself. You forgot that. So you become to be a rebuker. So you fight with her. Why? Because you forgot Hashem. The reason that the person is falling to sins is only because that he forgot Hashem. So if you're going to remind yourself about Hashem, every situation that you see, hey, in that situation I forgot Hashem. Please Hashem, let me remember you. Please Hashem, let me never forget you. Please Hashem, let me always be right, never to forget you, always to be straight, always to go by the rules of the Torah. If you're going to do that, you're going to fix, you're going to balance all of your life. You're going to live your life with Hashem. Itbarach. And then you're going to achieve complete faith. And power of imagination will never going to distract you, will never going to confuse you anymore. Because you are always going to see things till the end of them. You're going to th see through. You're going to understand it all. You're going to know exactly what Hashem wants from you. Because you completed your tshuva. You achieved tshuva shlema. You can see the light of Hashem itbarach. You can see the supervision of God in your life. And that's redemption. That's geula shlema. That's it. So we need every one of us. Like we said, if Rav Avadia Yosef is saying, do tshuva, no one listens. If Dror Kasuto is saying, one hour, do tshuva, do tshuva, no one listens. Okay, so I understand. So let's say it again. Do tshuva. Not be religious. Do tshuva. Go and confess as much as you can. And not slaughter yourself and break yourself to pieces. Just talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. Tell him, Father, look. In that situation, I was wrong. Please help me. I hurt that person too harsh, too hard. I was too strong with him. Please let me be easier next time. Bezat Hashem, give me the power also to apologize. Next thing. Hashem, when I was eating, that's not the way to eat. That's not the way to behave. Please Hashem, give me manners. Let me be polite, more relaxed. That I will eat the food, that the food will not going to eat me. Let me have the power to control my inner hunger, my, 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 my inner will, desires. Let me eat with a settled mind, relax, to think on what that I'm eating, to aim the meaning of the brachot. Please, Hashem, give me that relaxation, that to become, to be able to, to eat like a human being. Please, move on. Next situation in your life. Hashem in Mincha, I forgot you. I was just reading the text from the Sidur. Please help me to request, to ask, to read the words from the Sidur to you, like I'm reading them to you. Let me see that you're standing in front of me. Let me remember you when I'm talking, when I'm praying. Please, Hashem, move on, next stage in your life. When you do tshuva like that, you're reviewing your day from yesterday's tshuva, yesterday it bodedut, till today it bodedut, you're fixing everything. 100% of your life, you're gonna fix. You're going to make it after 120 to heaven clean as a baby. Like you never sinned in your life. I promise you, Rabbeinu already promised that in Nikutem Moran. I'm just refreshing our memories. Thank you. Chazak Baruch Yishar Koch. Hey, what's up guys? It's Obi from the Imuna channel here in Jerusalem. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to Rav Dror. So show me some love. Show Rav Dror some love. Subscribe to the channel. We post new videos almost every single day. Awesome classes like this. If you have any questions on the classes you just watched or just other questions that you have or comments that you want to tell us, post them in the comments below. And we do a question and answer session every single week. So we'll either answer your question in that on video or we'll make sure to get you an answer. And of course, check out immunachannel.com. Awesome website where we have tons more inspirational content 
We have videos, blogs, music, and all sorts of cool stuff. So get involved over there at immunachannel.com, and we'll see you in the comments. Thank you.